Hello. This video explains how to install a new Cisco Firepower Threat Defense firewall using load touch provisioning. Firewalls examine the internet traffic traveling to and from your local network in order to prevent attacks that could steal your data or disrupt your business. Your task is to connect the device to your network, power it on, and use the device's status lights to confirm it has connected to the Cisco cloud or to alert your IT department to any errors. This process should take about 40 minutes to complete. You may want to do this after normal business hours, or your IT department may give you some guidance as to the best time to perform this task. After that, your IT department can log in remotely and configure the device. Step 1. Take inventory. Before you connect the cables to the new firewall, you're going to inventory the equipment that came in the box and get oriented to your new device. Keep the cardboard box the device came in. On the box, look for the product identifier sticker. It will confirm for you that Firepower Threat Defense Software version 6.7 is installed. This software is required to deploy your device using low touch provisioning. This is the sticker you will see on a Firepower 1000 series device. The sticker on a Firepower 2100 series device will read SFF2K TD 6.7 K9. Then look at the large sticker on the box, record the serial number, and send it to your IT department. They will need it to manage the device. Once you have plugged in the device, connected it to your network, and the device has successfully contacted the Cisco cloud, you can throw the box away. Your device came with a small pamphlet with a QR code on it. It should say Cisco Firepower 1010, Cisco Firepower 1100, or Cisco Firepower 2100. If it mentions the Cisco Firepower 4100 or 9300, call your IT department. Those devices don't support low touch provisioning. Your firewall might also come with a standard ASA license. Hold on to it, but you're not going to need it for this task. Your power cord will come in one or two pieces. This power cord for the Firepower 1010 comes in two pieces. Your firewall will come with a console cable. Keep this cable in case anyone needs to connect a laptop to the firewall. And of course the firewall itself. This is a Firepower 1010. Let's take a look at the lights, ports, and power socket, as well as find the serial number on a Firepower 1010. This is the back of a Firepower 1010. This is the status LED. You'll use this LED to confirm the device's connection to the Cisco cloud. This is the power socket. This is Ethernet port 1.1. This is your management interface. You won't need to use it. These are console ports. You would only use them if instructed to by your IT department or Cisco support. This QR code sticker provides a link to documentation about low touch provisioning and to this video. The documentation also links to FTD onboarding instructions for CDO administrators. And finally, the serial number for the Firepower 1010 is here on the sticker at the bottom of the device. You may have received a Firepower 1100 series or 2100 series device instead of a Firepower 1010. If you did, take a moment to familiarize yourself with these devices. The remainder of the video will show the lights of the Firepower 1010 but the concepts are the same for all device types. On the Firepower 1100, here are the status LED, Ethernet port 1.1, and the console ports. If you need it, the serial number for the 1100 series devices will be found on a sticker here as well as on the bottom of the device. The QR code sticker pointing to low touch provisioning documentation will be here. And here are the status LED, Ethernet port 1.1, and the console port on a Firepower 2100. The documentation QR sticker will be here. If you need it, the serial number for the Firepower 2100 can be found on a pullout tab on the front of the device. Now we're going to connect the network cable and power to the device. This is a networking illustration for the Firepower 1010. First, you're going to plug in the device. Next, you're going to connect a network cable from Ethernet port 1.1, shown here in blue, to your wide area network modem. Your WAN modem is your route to the internet, 
and will give your Firepower firewall a route to the internet as well. This illustration also shows a variety of devices being plugged into the firewall. You don't need to do that to complete this task. Now that the firewall is plugged in and the network cable is connected, it's time to monitor the status of the firewall using the status LED. Here's an estimate of the timing of the LED status changes. These status changes could take a little more or a little less time based on network conditions and the firepower model you're working with. This is the timing of the LED status changes for my firepower 1010. Here are examples of what the status LED changes look like. At about one minute, the LED status light starts to flash fast green. If the light flashes a fast amber instead, the device didn't boot properly and you will need to call your IT department for what to do next. At about 10 minutes, the status light turns solid green when it's done loading the system software. If the light glows solid amber, the firewall software didn't load properly and you will need to call your IT department. In about another five minutes, when the device reaches the Cisco cloud, the status light flashes green slowly, about twice in five seconds. If the device can't reach the Cisco cloud, you'll see the status LED alternate green and amber. If this happens, check the cabling again to make sure that your network cable is connected from Ethernet port 1.1 to your WAN modem. If you've checked the network cabling, and the green amber flashing doesn't change to the slow flashing green light, call your IT department. When you see the slow flashing green light, you're done. At this point, your IT department can configure the firewall remotely. Thanks for watching.